prayed over your hands. Uh, Frank had to remind me, but years ago we went on a pilgrimage to Mechigori when Frank was just Dr. Frank. And I prayed over Dr. Frank and everyone in the group. When I prayed over his hands, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit came over me and I said, Frank, these are the hands of a Catholic deacon. And many years later, he's now a Catholic deacon. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. So that's called prophecy. So you see, God has a secret plan and a special plan for every one of you. None of us is a throwaway. Amen. Amen. As John Paul liked to say, you are unique, precious, and unrepeatable. Everyone in this church is unique, precious, and unrepeatable. Amen. Amen. Would you say that after me? Say this. I am, I am. unique. Precious, Precious and, unrepeatable. and unrepeatable. Now, would you turn to the one to your left or your right and tell them, you are unique, precious, and unrepeatable. You're not supposed to be having this much fun. <laughs> aren't, we're Catholic. We're supposed to be like serious and depressed, aren't we? <laughs> right. But, you know, the book says that we are celebrating the Mass. It actually says that in the official book from Rome, that the priest is the principal celebrant, and you, and you are concelebrating with me. So we are celebrating together. Amen? Amen. Isn't that right, my beautiful music director? Yes. If anyone knows it, you do. I Amen. absolutely do. God is so good. Isn't he beautiful? Yes, he is and awesome. Every Mass, we are to celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And beloved, in case you don't really know him yet, you need to know him, and you want to ask the good Lord Jesus to come into your life in a new way. And by the way, that's not Protestant, that's Catholic. <laughs> Bishop Sheen said that long before any Protestant pastor ever said it. Bishop Fulton J. Sheen said... You must have a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior. Did you know that? St. Paul says in the Bible that all of Christianity comes down to this. He said, Christ dwelling within. Amen. Amen? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? It's actually profound. All of our faith comes down to Jesus Christ living within us. And you want to be able to feel him. You want to be able to hear his voice now and then. Amen? Amen. I say every day. And so, beloved, try this. This is the prayer that John Paul recommended. It's only three lines. Let's do this right now just to get this done. It's a mini consecration to the Lord Jesus through Mary. John Paul recommended this. It was written by St. Louis de Montfort. So could you say this now? Say, I am all thine, Lord Jesus. I am all thine, Lord Jesus. And all that I have is thine. Through the, Through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's nice, isn't it? Let's say it a second time in the plural, because we are a family. Would you say this now? We are all thine, Lord Jesus. We are all thine, thine Lord Jesus. And all that we have is thine. And all that we have is thine. Through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, beloved. There's not a day that passes, even in Temple Terrace, where Jesus doesn't come down to talk to you. One way or the other. But that's why the Bible says these mysterious words, blessed is he or she who has the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And so we might need to pray for the healing of our eyes and our ears that we can begin to see and hear Jesus when he comes. Amen? Now, the Spirit wants me to share with you something that happened to me on the streets of downtown Tampa. You know, I was born and raised here in Tampa. It, is so, it feels so good to be back home. It feels so good. I, my mom and dad are with me right now. This was their parish, my mom and dad. And I didn't arrange this. The Holy Spirit arranged it. Amen? Amen. But this happened in downtown Tampa. 
with my, my Uncle Johnny, he had a sign company, my Uncle John. And as a young man, I worked for Uncle Johnny. He had what's called <clears throat> Sinchet Neon Signs. And we made a lot of the signs around town, a lot of the big signs. And my Uncle Johnny, he was a wonderful artist. He would design the signs. And then my partner, Ben, and I, we would, we would make them. So Uncle Johnny would go out to different businesses, and they call it sell the sign. Do you need a sign, sir? He asked him what he wants. My uncle would design it, bring it back to the man. If they liked it, would go with it. Uncle Johnny would make the specifications. Ben and I would get the materials and make the signs and put them up and repair them as well. So one day in downtown Tampa, you know, near Florida Avenue, you know, we were on the sidewalks there fixing a sign that was right there that needed some repair. It was not a hard job. It took a couple hours. So we put the ladder up, and Ben was my partner. He climbed up the ladder, and he was up there working, and I was holding the ladder, just for safety's sake. But you know how it is down there, you know, in Florida Avenue, in Tampa Avenue? There's not too much traffic on the, on the sidewalks. There used to be a long time ago, but now it's more like all shuttered in front, and you get to those businesses from behind, it's like they call it urban flight. People just left there. So it's like, it's like nobody on the sidewalk. There's a lot of cars going by. So I'm holding the ladder, and Ben is up there. There's a lot of traffic whizzing by about the middle of the day. Not a single person on the sidewalk. I'm holding up there when I hear some sort of faint voice um, in the background. And I was wondering, because there's nobody there, just Ben and I in the cars. And I, I look to my left. And wait, there's somebody down there, like a, looks like a midget, but some real small old lady is way down the sidewalk, and she's saying something. I can hardly hear her at first. She's kind of short. She's a beautiful old black lady. She's like somebody's great-grandmother. She was so beautiful. And she was all hunched over like this, and she had something in her hands, and she'd stop every few feet and say something. I couldn't hardly hear her. She got a little bit closer to me, and I'm holding the ladder, and I can hear her now. She's stopping every 15 or 20 yards, and she yells out, peanuts, 25 cents. <laughs> and she put her head back down, and she keep on moving and walking. And she stop, and she say, peanuts, 25 cents. And I'm watching her, and I said, who is she selling peanuts to? <laughs> there, there ain't nobody on the sidewalk at all. I mean, nobody. If it wasn't for that broken sign, we wouldn't be there either. <laughs> Just cars whizzing by, you know, with their windows up and their air conditioners on. They can't hear her either. And I'm thinking, who in the world is she talking to? And she gets a little bit closer, and it's real clear now. She stops, peanuts, 25 cents. And I look at my partner, Ben, and I said, hey, Ben. I had to ask Ben because I was a poor man then, and I'm a poor man now. <laughs> so I said, hey, Ben, you got a couple quarters? He said, yeah, Jimmy. He was an old southern boy. And he threw me down two quarters. He said, I'm going to get two bags of peanuts. We're the only business she has. <laughs> so she, and I couldn't wait till she came by so I could, you know, like you love old people. Don't you like to hug them and kiss them, the old grandmas? She was so beautiful. I couldn't wait till she got clothes. And she looked very poor, but very beautiful. Oh, my gosh. She was beautiful, like with love, with charity. I couldn't wait till she got close so I could like, give her my two quarters, you know? And I, I'm going to get two bags of peanuts. I want two. <laughs> and I was waiting for her to get real close to me, and she did. She got real close, and she went around Ben and I on the ladder. She never looked at me, and around us in front of the ladder like this, and she, she called out, peanuts, 25 cents. And I'm behind her back there. <laughs> I'm the only one on the ground. And then she keeps moving, and she goes right by me. And it goes another two, and then she calls it out again. And it hit me like a ton of bricks real hard because she was so poor, and I wanted to help her. She was so beautiful. And I knew what the Bible said because I was very young, but I still went to Mass every day back then. And I know what your Bible says, that the Lord hears the cry of the poor. Amen? And it also says, whatsoever you do to the least of your brothers, you do to me. Amen? Amen? I knew what the Bible said. And suddenly my feelings all change inside. 
And I said, wait a minute. I'm holding the ladder. I said, Lord, I know you're in her. You walked right by me. You didn't even look at me. I'm the only one here to buy your peanuts. You don't even look at me. And I got upset because I love Jesus. I love him. Do you love him? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes. I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say it right now. Put your right hand like this. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's the best. Amen. Amen. That's what life is about, loving Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, I actually got upset at the Lord. I said, Lord, it's not fair. I love you. You don't even look at me. And when I said that, the old lady, I said it quietly, not out loud, she turned around, looked in my eyes with like two laser beam eyes. She looked right in my eyes. She said, peanuts, 25 cents. I didn't say it out loud. How did she hear me? I complained to my best friend. You know, when you have a best friend, you can complain to them. You know what I mean? It's not fair. It's just not fair. I'm the one who loves you. You don't even look at me. A second later, she turns around right in my eyes. Peanuts, 25 cents. Like laser beams through my eyes. And I said to her, I'll take two. One of the proudest moments of my young life. <laughs> and so I took the two quarters, and I, I put them in her hand, and the old lady spoke to me. And she said to me, she says, wars and rumors of wars. They all talk about war and rumors of war. But I, I just keep my eyes on Jesus. How's that for a homily? I said, yes, ma'am. And I threw the bag of peanuts up to bed and turned around to thank her. And she was gone. I'm getting the Holy Spirit goosebumps right now. I threw the peanuts up to Ben, the true story, absolutely true, in every detail. Turn around to say thank you. And she's gone. And all the businesses are all boarded up. You can only get in the back of them. You can't get in the business from the front doors. They're all locked because of security reasons. Nobody there. She couldn't cross that street. The traffic's going like, about 50 miles an hour? I'd like to see her cross that traffic. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was gone. I thought, oh, my gosh. Never, beloved, look at anyone with a snarled nose. Never. You just don't know. Even at USF, when somebody walks up to you on the sidewalk, it might be Jesus. In fact, it is, because he hides in everyone. Amen? Amen? What did Mother Teresa say? He hides in the distressing disguise of the poor. He's always surrounding you and I. And the more we love one another, the more that you'll see miracles. It's that simple. The more we love, the more we see miracles. Amen? Amen? Because God is love. And so now, beloved, I want you to do a special exercise right now. Not a physical exercise, a moral exercise. Are you ready? I want you to turn to the one to your left and then to your right and say to that one, I see Jesus in you and you're beautiful. The one on your left and your right, I see Jesus in you, and you're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Es muy hermoso. Muy hermoso. Now, just think, brothers and sisters, this really is like the best preparation for Holy Communion. Because now you're going to receive him face to face. Amen? Amen? Mother Teresa said it got to a point. She's right here with us right now. Can you see her? She's standing next to me to my left, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, what did she used to say? After a long while of adoration 
and feeding the poor. She said, finally, it got to be like this, she said. Whenever she would receive Holy Communion, she would see the poor. Whenever she would see the poor, she would see Holy Communion. At Mass, at every Mass, in adoration, she would see the Eucharist, she would see the poor in the Eucharist. And in every poor person, she would see the Lord in the Holy Sacrament. Isn't that profound? So you just received the best preparation. We saw Jesus in one another, warts and pimples and all. We saw him. There were even a few bald-headed Jesuses here tonight. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And a few gray-haired Jesuses too. Now you're going to see him face to face. And beloved, if you had ears to hear when you receive Holy Communion tonight, you would hear these words. I love you. If you could hear the host, and maybe you will, you will hear these words, because God is love, and the Eucharist is God. You will hear this. I love you. Amen? Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now Friends, would you stand with Deacon and myself for the intercessions for today's Mass? For prophets and teachers in the church, that, they, that their call may be heard and put into action, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For government leaders, that their efforts will end human trafficking throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, that healing may come through the uh, intercession of Our Lady. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our priests, clergy, and religious, that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in and through their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved deceased, that they will embrace the fullness of life in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for those needs not now mentioned, but which we hold deep in our heart, known to our loving God alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Beloved, let's pray now for an end to abortion in Triple Terrace and throughout the world. We ask God, we beg God, please, no more children murdered. Amen? Amen. For a complete end to abortion here and throughout the world, through Mary's intercession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to pray, beloved, for the young people present at our church tonight and all those who attend school, especially at USF, that God would rescue them. Amen? He would show our young people that he is real, and he would manifest his love to them with signs and wonders. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And beloved, we want to pray for every member of your family and mine, even distant cousins, that none of our relatives will lose their souls, that everyone in your family and mine will be eternally saved. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray that everyone in the world, including our beloved Muslim brothers and sisters, that everyone will be baptized into Jesus Christ and know the love of the true God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Beloved, let's pray now to the Holy Virgin Mary, 
asking her to bring these petitions and our hearts to her son Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us. All you saints and angels, pray for us. Please be seated, beloved. Jesus, come to us, lead us to your light. Jesus, be with us, for we need you. Lord, we come before you, listen to our prayer. your faithfulness through night. You will be with us this we know. Jesus, come to us. Lead us to your light. Jesus, be Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, our brothers of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as Creator for this our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't forget, Jesus said, when you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you will live forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourselves so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. my Lord and my God.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Mother Teresa, with St. Padre Pio, with Blessed Carlo Acutis, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, with Gregory, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, praying for the salvation of everyone in the world, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, truly present, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the good Lord be with you always. And with your
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, by the consumption of your precious body and blood, bring my friends and I, please, to eternal life. Amen. Amen. body
remember how you loved us to your death and soon we celebrate for you are with us here and we believe that we will see everybody.
Jesus loves me. Testing Ave Maria. It works. We have two special gifts for you tonight, beloved. So we're going to get the first one ready right now. We have for everyone in the church tonight a bottle of holy water, but not just holy water. I'm now going to give it the exorcism blessing of the Holy Catholic Church. So we're going to have everybody, when we're done, we'll bring home with you tonight a fresh bottle of exercise holy water mixed with exercise salt. And this is what we use in an exorcism. This kind of blessing is very powerful. So what I'm going to do now is bless the salt, first of all, in John Paul's hands with the official blessing of the church. Then I'm going to bless the water, and it's already stationed in four stations right now. The blessing will carry through to where they are. Then as I conclude Mass and go back to change my robe, you will come up, everyone, like Holy Communion, and take a bottle, and you're going to put a pinch of the blessed salt into your bottle. When I come back out, you should be ready, and I'll do the final blessing over the mixture of water and salt while it's in your hand. Amen? Amen. It's very, very effective, and the church asks that you would, as you see me, bless the salt, and then in a few minutes, I'm going to bless the water. When you see the priest blessed like this, you should take your right hand at the same time and bless your body simultaneously. So when you see me do the blessing over the water and over the salt several times, would you please have the honor of blessing yourself? And that, what that will do is bring the exorcism blessing over your body. So you will leave here feeling a lot lighter tonight. Good. Amen? Yes. The Catholic Church is truly rich. Amen? Amen? She's rich in great graces, and every one of them, every one of them, they come from the wounded side of Jesus and through the prayers of Mary. Amen? Amen. So I asked Mama now to help me because she's the mother of priests. Mother, help us to do this blessing pleasing to your son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. So we begin, brothers and sisters, with the official exorcism blessing of the salt. Our help is in the name of the Lord. O salt, creature of God, I exorcise you by the living God, by the true God, by the holy God, 
by the God who ordered you to be poured into the water by Elisha the prophet so that its life-giving powers might be restored. I exercise you so that you may become a means of salvation for believers, that you may bring health of soul and body to all who make use of you, and that you may put to flight and drive away from the places where you are sprinkled every apparition, villainy, turn of devilish deceit, and every unclean spirit adjured by him who will come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we humbly implore you in your immeasurable kindness and love to bless this salt which you created and gave to the use of mankind so that it may become a source of health for the minds and bodies of all who make use of it. May it rid whatever it touches or sprinkles of all uncleanness and protect it from every assault of evil spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Nadine's going to get the salt in the bowls. Now I'm going to do the blessing for the water. Let me ask one of the other. I feel like Andrew comes here. Stand next to Deacon, please. Now we're going to do the blessing for this water and all the waters here in the church, the exorcism blessing. O warder, preacher of God, I exercise you in the name of God the Father Almighty and in the name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. I exercise you so that you may put to flight all the power of the enemy and be able to root out and supplant that enemy with his apostate angels through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will come to judge the living and the dead and the world by fire. Amen. Oremos. Let us pray. O oh God, for the salvation of mankind, you built your greatest mysteries on this substance, water. In your kindness, hear our prayers and pour down the power of your blessing into this element, made ready for many kinds of purification. May this, your creature, become an agent of divine grace in the service of your mystery to drive away evil spirits and dispel sickness so that everything in the home and other buildings of the faithful that is sprinkled with this water may be rid of all uncleanness and freed from every harm. Let no breath of infection and no disease-bearing air Remain in these places. May the wows of the lurking enemy prove of no avail. That whatever might menace the safety and peace of those who live here be put to flight by the sprinkling of this water so that the health obtained by calling upon your holy name may be made secure against all attack through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Nadine, would you bring a one bowl of salt, please? Beloved, when you receive your bottle, and we'll have helpers to help you, you'll take the little tiny protective cap off, and you're going to put a pinch of the exercise salt into the bottle of your exercise water. May a mixture of salt and water now be made, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And so, beloved, thank you, sis. Thank you. After the closing blessing and the closing hymn, I will go back and just change my robes and come right back out. By that time, you should have your bottle in your hand at your pew with a salt, a pinch of salt inside of it, I need to come back out and put a final blessing of victory over that water that's in your hands. Then I have another gift to give to you, a special gift from St. Michael the Archangel. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let's stand, please, for the closing prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament that we may find help for our bodies now and likewise in times to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a special Lenten blessing, beloved. Would you bow your heads for the special blessing of Lent? Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the beautiful God bless you in every way. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Holy Mass is ended. Let us go or stay in peace. Thanks be to God. We have a closing hymn and then we'll have a special order. Let there be peace on earth, people. Come on, let's sing it out. Let there be peace on earth. Let there.
up from the sides, just like you did for communion. We have helpers at four tables. The front pews come up here to the front. The back pews go to the middle tables. The ushers are going to help open the bottles for you so that you can take a pinch of salt and put it in your own bottle. So just take, just like communion, so it's nice and orderly and we can get done by the time Father comes back. Thank you.
your exercise for tonight. Have a seat. Testing Ave Maria. Ave Maria. Did everybody now receive your bottle of holy water? Yes. And everybody has a pinch of the blessed salt in the water, no? Yes. Now we have the closing blessing for that sacramental. It's quite a beautiful prayer. It only takes us one or two minutes. Are you ready? Yes. If you could, beloved, have the bottle in your hand, if you could. And if you can, you can take the top off if you can. Just hold it up in front of you. Just take us one minute. It's quite a beautiful and powerful prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'm going to place my hand over your bottles now. Let us pray. O oh God, creator unconquerable, invincible King, victor ever glorious, you hold in check the forces bent on dominating us. You overcome the cruelty of the raging enemy. And in your power, you beat down the wicked foe. Humbly and fearfully do we pray to you, O Lord. And we ask you to look with favor on this salt and water which you created. Shine on it with the light of your kindness. Sanctify it by the dew of your love, so that through the invocation of your holy name, wherever this water and salt is sprinkled, it may turn aside every attack of the unclean spirit and dispel the terrors of the poisonous serpent. And wherever we may be, make the Holy Spirit present to us who now implore your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Then it's a tradition to give the first blessing immediately, so you may want to take your, a drop on your finger and bless yourself with the first blessing right now to do the first blessing right after the blessing. And I need to borrow somebody's. Thank you, Mama. And then take a drop from your own bottle and bless yourself with the sign of the cross.
Now, what you have in your hand is a very powerful sacramental. It's exercise holy water. It's what we use in an exorcism. I would recommend, beloved, that you bless yourself every day with a drop of that water. You probably have enough for the rest of the year. Also, consider this. If you have any difficulties in your body, whether they're physical sicknesses or maybe like a spirit that's bothering you, like a spirit of sadness, consider putting a drop in your coffee or your water and drinking it. Or you can put it right on your tongue and take a sip every day. If there's anything inside of you that's hurting you, whether it's physical or spiritual. Amen? Amen. If you have somebody in your family, for lack of a better word, who's naughty, don't tell them, but tomorrow morning when you make breakfast, <laughs> sprinkle some of the water on their Cheerios. <laughs> but don't tell them. You just say a prayer and let God do it. Amen? Amen? It's very efficacious that way. Here's a true story from Central America. I had a man come to see me in one of my parishes there. Divine Mercy Catholic Church. And the poor man, he was afflicted with something where he couldn't sleep at night. And you know, that's no fun. But this poor fellow, he had not slept in approximately 70 days. You can't do that. Just ask Dr. Frank, Deacon Frank, he's a sleep doctor. He's falling asleep right now. <laughs> But Frank will tell you that. I mean, that'll kill you, right? It'll kill you. You can't, you can't do that. And he, he's a grown man. He was older than myself. He was a taxi driver in Belize City. And he had to stop driving taxi. And his wife sent him to me because he'd been to all kinds of doctors. And they gave him all kinds of medications and nothing was working. I mean, big, fat medications, you know, like psychotropic medications and things to make you sleep. Nothing worked. So she sent him to myself because... I was the exorcist for that diocese and also had a healing ministry. So I said, yes, bring him in. And the, he was crying. You know, and I would cry too. If you can't see for 70 days, that's terrible. He was, he was literally weeping. I said, Papa, let me, let me pray for you and pray with you. So I took the poor man's hands in my hands and I prayed with him. And as I prayed with him, immediately our best friend, the Holy Spirit, he's called the Comforter for a reason. He comforts you and I and our worst problems. Amen? Amen? He's even available in Temple Terrace. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Let's make Temple Terrace into Holy Terrace. <laughs> He's available here too. If you call on him, especially using the blood of Jesus, if you call on the Lord. So, as I pray to the Holy Spirit, suddenly, immediately, I had a vision right in front of me. The man's here. He's crying. He's holding my hands. And I see over his head what I would describe as a funnel cloud, like a tornado, a small tornado over his head. And it's going really fast. And in the funnel cloud, it's really dark. It's a bunch of bats. It's hundreds and hundreds of little bats. And they're in a formation circling around his head real fast. And I knew they were demons. I mean, I knew what they were. They're almost stinky. You know, they smell bad. They're around him like that. I said, oh, I said, Papa, I know why the medicine's not working. He says, why, Father? He says, because you don't have a medical problem. You have a demon problem. And then I said to him this, and I can share this with you. I said, someone has cursed you. There's a curse over you. That's where these are coming from. Have you been with another woman other than your wife? I'm sorry, I had to be honest. There was a curse on him, and I knew it came from a woman. I said, have you been with a woman other than your wife? Because, you know, when you play games like that with adultery and fornication especially in certain countries like Central America and Africa, you're playing with fire. 
and some of those women are evil. And if you go to one of those prostitutes and you don't pay them what they want and you don't come back, they'll put a curse on you. And I knew, like, right away, I said, have you been with someone? He said, yes. I said, confession right now. And so I heard his confession. He gave me permission to tell his story. I won't, I won't tell you his name. It's in a whole other country. I heard his confession. When I got done, here's what the Lord said to me to say to him. I said, sir, I'm going to give you a bottle of exercise holy water. When you go home, take a big, giant gulp of that and lay down and go to sleep. He said, yes, Father. So I gave him the bottle just like what you have. He went home, and his wife called me. This was about 3 or 4 in the afternoon. His wife called me the next day about 10 or 11 in the morning. She said, Father, he's still sleeping like a baby. He went to bed like four. He was still sleeping the next morning at 10 a.m., sleeping like a baby. After the confession, it was easy to get rid of the devil after the confession. Amen? Amen. So the holy water you have is very powerful. And I want to tell you one more thing about holy water, about this holy water. And I don't know if I really, if I'm supposed to say this out loud, but I just had to share with you the truth, okay? Just take it for what it is. I'm not making any conclusions. I just want to tell you this. I just had the ninth person dying of COVID-19 in the hospital, in the ICU, supposed to die the same day. I sent that war to them, and he was healed. That's the ninth one healed of COVID-19 on his deathbed from the water in your hand. And I say, Father, don't say those things. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? I'm not going to draw any conclusions. All I'm going to tell you is this. I've seen nine people, two were Jewish. Two were Jews who took the water in the ICU. In fact, we couldn't even bring it to them. We had to sneak it to them through the nurse. And they drank the holy water and blessed themselves. All nine were healed the same day. And they all came home. Now, of course, now you realize that's not me, right? You're not copying from me because I didn't, I didn't do that. God did it. Amen. Every miracle comes from God. And to be more specific, every miracle comes from God through Jesus by the hands of Mary. Amen? Amen? To be more specific. So what you have in your hand is radioactive. It's very, very powerful. Bless yourself every day. If you have a problem, take a sip of it, either directly or in your coffee, your water, or your juice. And there's somebody in your family that's having trouble, you don't even need to tell them. Just, they say, honey, yes, look up there. And they look, <laughs> put it on their spaghetti right away. And ask God to set them free. Amen? Amen. Any questions, beloved? It's a precious sacramental, is it not? Yes, yes mama. It's a good question. <laughs> well, I only charge $100 a bottle. <laughs> that's a good question what we do and I have a chapel in Georgia like a healing chapel so what we do there in my own community is that we have a table in the back of the church it's actually in the in the, the front meeting room at the back of the church or sign the church proper we have a table and everyone brings their sacramentals every day so we have an exorcism blessing once a week in my community we bless all the water the salt the oil and the crucifixes every week People bring 1 to 25 gallons of water. So they have enough, you might say, for the rest of the year. We've had many, many, many miracles. By the way, Protestants bring me their water. <laughs> when it comes down to brass tacks, they know where the power is. Amen? <laughs> it's true. So um, you might want to uh, ask your pastors, I mean, very nicely, you know, never be, like, demanding or mean, but very politely. Uh, Father Michael seems like a wonderful priest, the pastor here. I bet he would do it, but ask your pastors to have that set up in some special way that works best for his schedule, where you could bring water. By the way, Deacon Frank can bless it for you, too. Frank, can I give them your address? <laughs> I'm just joking. But any deacon can bless it, too, with that blessing.
So, Frank, make sure I give you a copy of that tonight, okay? A deacon can bless it, too. They might have a little more time, but any deacon, priest, or bishop can do this blessing, okay? Now, have you noticed something, beloved? Just a little theological note for you. Have you noticed how God, our God, there's only one God, there's only one God, that our God does the greatest things with the smallest materials? Have you noticed that? So look, you have a little bit of water there, a little bit of salt, a special blessing, and the power of God himself through Jesus comes into the water and miracles happen. Amen? Amen. Little tiny, how about this? A little piece of unleavened bread is blessed with a special prayer and becomes the body and blood of the God-man on the altar. Amen? Amen. Now, isn't God magnificent? Yes. He's trying to teach you and I we don't need to be big shots. Amen? Amen. We have to be little boys and little girls. Amen? Amen. So I want to teach you my favorite little boy prayer. Are you ready? Yes. You may know this one. It's from a new saint. His name is Don Dolindo. And he's a servant of God right now. But he was a friend of Padre Pio. And make sure you come tomorrow night for the healing mass because I'm going to bring the robe that Padre Pio used to wear. We'll have the robe with us tomorrow night. This was Padre Pio's best friend. I've read that he was actually Padre Pio's spiritual director, Don Dolindo. God gave him the Dovina of Surrender. Here's the main prayer. It always works. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Amen? Amen. That prayer, beloved, is an novena that goes with it. It takes one minute a day. For some reason, that one always works. For some reason, that one always works. The Lord said, whatever you surrender to me without holding on to it, I will grant to you. Isn't that amazing? So I had an experience with this. The Lord says to share this story with you real quick. It's an unusual story. It has to do with divine protection. With a man and woman in my community in Georgia whose lives were in danger. On a Sunday, I came back to my rectory in Georgia. I had said mass at a local parish. And so when my day was done, I went back to my rectory, which is like out in the woods. I have a Catholic homeschooling community out in the woods in Georgia. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. We have five chapels with the Eucharist, all Catholic families. I go back, it's like my refuge. And I go back there and I can rest and it's quiet and I can pray. I wasn't there like even half an hour when the phone rang, and one of the married couples that's not part of my immediate community, but they're in the outlying areas, they're very faithful, so they come to join us for Mass. They said, Father, please, can we come and talk to you? We're in trouble. And I said, okay, meet me downstairs in the chapel. So they drove in. They're about 20 minutes away. They were there right away. It was Sunday afternoon, and I sat down with them, and they shared with me this particular story. And for some reason, I'm supposed to share this with you tonight. Maybe there's someone here. This is going to ring for you very strong and very true. It's a prayer of protection, a miracle of protection, what happened. I said, tell me, what's wrong? I was surprised because Papa, the husband, is one tall hombre. He's like six foot eight. He's a big man. And, I mean, he's big and strong. And his wife is pretty big too, let me tell you. I don't know who would win the wrestling match, to be honest with you. They're a pretty um, formidable couple, let's put it that way. And I'm, I'm surprised they're afraid. I mean, they, they, could, they could beat up a giant themselves. And they look like they're, they're really frightened. I said, well, what's wrong? And they said, Father, we have somebody in our house. I said, what? tell me. I've been to their house. I've blessed their house. It's a nice house. Well, our old friends called us, 
They were old friends. We, when we lived out west, they said to me, we all live in Georgia now, but when they lived out west, when they were newly married many years ago, like 35 years ago, this was like their, their best friends, another young married couple. They left and moved to Georgia because of his work and had been there now for like 35 years. They said, our friend called us out of the blue, this other couple. We haven't heard of them in 35 years. And they called us and they said, listen, dad and mom, we have our daughter. She's traveling through the country with her husband. And she's going to be traveling through Georgia tomorrow. She has no place to stay, she and her husband. And we we're wondering, uh, could you put them up in your house for us? Just overnight. Famous last words, right? Overnight. Just overnight. And my friends felt put on the spot. Understandably, they had not seen them in 35 years. And the young lady who was traveling with her husband, she was like 30. They had never met her before. She was born after they left. So they felt kind of uncomfortable because they're very like, um, even though they're big, strong man and woman, they're very shy, kind of like humble, kind of like gentle and humble. And they felt uncomfortable, but they did not know how to say no. They felt it would be impolite to say no. So they said, they said okay. So the next day, their old friends, their grown daughter, comes by with her husband. My friends meet them and take them into their home. They have a, a really nice basement apartment. Nothing, not, not like a millionaire, but clean and good in their basement. And they came down there, they took it, and they wouldn't go. Been like a couple weeks now, they're down there. And they found out after two weeks, that the man isn't really her husband. That's not her husband. And see, in my, in my community, we take that seriously. That's called fornication. Amen? That's not cute. It's not funny. That's serious sin. Amen? It really is serious. Beloved, we need to get back to purity in the world. We must become virgins again, all of us. Amen? Amen? All sexual sin is from Satan, all of it. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality, pornography, it's all from the devil. None of it works. It all makes you sick in your body and your soul. Amen? Amen. None of it works. We have to get back to virginity. Amen? In other words, we need to be virgins the day we're married or the day we become priests or nuns. We should be virgins. Amen? I'm just speaking the truth. Is it not true? In fact, what I see is this. Sexual sin brings misery. I've never met anyone happy who's an adulterer or a homosexual. They're all miserable. It, it doesn't bring any joy at all. It destroys your soul. Amen? Amen. And so my, my friends felt bad because they believe in chastity. I, their two boys are very chaste. Their older boy has now been accepted to be a priest. They're a very good family. And they don't believe in this. And there's a couple in their basement practicing fornication. And it bothers them because they don't believe in that. It's wrong. And they were fooled by their friends. That's not her husband. They knew it wasn't her husband. They knew that. But then he found out the next day that he was the husband the husband, the man, was wanted by the law. He found out almost by accident. He's actually a fugitive on the run. He found out because he knew, uh, like a sheriff's deputy, somehow he found out about this. He went home to tell his wife. When he went downstairs in the basement to get something from the washing machine, he walked by the bedroom and he saw a gun on the bedside table, a revolver. This is all a true story. That's what they're telling me on this Sunday afternoon. There's a gun there, a revolver. They don't have any weapons in their house except the rosary. That's their weapon. And they saw the revolver. That's when they really became terribly distressed and called me. And they said to me, Father, we don't know what to do. If we call the parents, our old friends, we take the chance of hurting them or, you know, breaking the friendship forever. If we tell them, the young couple, they might get angry and he has a gun there. 
if we call the police, there might be a gun battle in our house. We don't know what to do, and we're scared. It's kind of a bad situation, wasn't it? So I said, you know, let's ask the Lord to help us, and I prayed with them, and immediately the Holy Spirit said to me, give them the novena of surrender by Don Dolindo. Immediately he told me what to do. I don't know how you can be a priest or even a Christian without the Holy Spirit. I don't know how you can do it. He's the one that's meant to guide you and I in everything we do. Amen? Amen. And if you let him, he will guide you. Even if you're married or single, he will guide you to a life that glows with the Holy Spirit. He will guide every choice you make. Amen? Amen. Well, he told me what to do. I went into my little office. I brought out a copy of the prayer, and I gave it to them. We prayed it together. So we did day one. If I can, I'll get a copy for you tomorrow. We'll see if we can get a copy for everybody for tomorrow of this novena. So I did day one with them. It's nine days in a row, a little meditation given by the Lord Jesus Christ to Don Dolindo. After you say the meditation, then you say the prayer ten times. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Let's say it ten times right now for whatever is the greatest concern in your life right now. Like the biggest worry, whatever it is, it might be nasty, whatever it is. Let's pray it right now ten times for whatever is most grieving your heart. Amen? Amen. Let's do it right now. I'm going to say, oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you, and you please answer. Take care of everything. All right? But say it from your heart, from your heart. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Now say it like you mean it, okay? Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of now remember when you pray, beloved, always put your heart into your word. Never pray just with your lips or just with your head. Put your heart into your words. Amen? Amen. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Amen. 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 Isn't that a beautiful prayer? It's easy and it works. My friends did that for nine days. Nine meditations, takes one minute a day. On the ninth day, they said it and went to bed. About, a, I'm guessing, two, three to three in the morning, Mama wakes up. His wife... She is a prophet. What I mean by that is she's a woman who has prophetic dreams from God. We all know it. She's had it for 30 years. She has a dream. You better look out. It's from God. It always comes true. She is a woman of God. And such should be you tonight. Amen? Amen. Every woman here should be a woman of God. And every man here should be a man of God. Amen? Amen with the Holy Spirit pouring through your fingertips. Amen? Amen? We must be holy. I'm quoting the Bible, right? Be ye holy as God is holy. Amen? Amen? And by the way, only holiness is fun. Sin is miserable. Only the holy ones are happy. Just go to the mall and sit down and watch. Everybody's miserable. <laughs> only saints are happy. Amen? Amen? So make that your priority. Become a saint this year. Don't waste any time. Amen? Amen? She had a dream. And she woke up her husband 2.30 in the morning and said, Husband, I had a dream. And he knew what that meant. Sit up and pay attention. So he sat up and he said, Yes, Mama. She said, Honey, I saw down in the basement. Uh-oh. I saw down in the basement. A giant python. 
giant, like 30 to 40 feet long. Big fat in circumference as well. A huge, fat, ugly python in the basement. And then I saw, yes, honey, I saw you go downstairs and confront it. <laughs> he says, thanks a lot, honey. <laughs> go back and get another dream, will you? So he had to put on, in his own words, his big boy pants, right? Put on his big boy pants. And he had to swallow real hard. He was scared to death because there was a gun down there too. But he knew, and I know too, his wife is a good woman. She's not perfect, but she's a good holy woman. That her dreams are always accurate, and it's true. So he, he decided to trust. He was scared to death, but he, he knew how God had led them in more than 35 years of marriage. He knew to obey. Not her, but God speaking through her. Because he's actually the boss, of course. That, I mean, that's, that's also true. He's the head of the family. But a holy wife is a wise counselor. And a smart man will listen to his holy wife. Amen? Amen? One of my uncles once did not listen to my aunt many years ago. I won't mention any names because they live here in Tampa. <laughs> I have lots of uncles and aunts. One of my uncles did not listen to my aunt. My aunt woke up one morning and said, Husband, I had a dream. And he said, What's that, honey? I saw these numbers in my dream, like five numbers. You're supposed to play them. And he, he was kind of macho. He said, oh, she's just a woman. What can she know? So he didn't buy the ticket, like a $1 ticket with those five numbers. The ticket won $5 million the next day. Her numbers, she wrote them down, $5 million. He, he just he ignored it. If you have a holy wife, you better listen to her. Amen? <laughs> I'm not saying do any gambling. I'm not saying that. I don't know where that came from. I think God was trying to help them. You know what I mean? So anyway, he listened to his wife, and he, he obeyed her. He went downstairs to confront the serpent. When he went downstairs trembling, he peeked into their bedroom, and they were gone. They were gone. Suitcases, gone everything bed was made up and they left they slipped out quietly in the middle of the night on the ninth day of the novena all on their own they were gone you see how god he gave that man a test didn't he he had to go downstairs with courage like a man go down when he did he got the miracle amen, amen. that was from the novena that we just prayed oh jesus i surrender myself to you Take care of everything. One more story, and then we're going to pray the St. Michael Chaplet, okay? This one you might know, but I need to share it with you because I had this miracle happen in my own family many, many years ago when I first became a priest. I became a, a Benedictine monk many years ago at St. Leo's Abbey. I was a monk there. Some said I was a monkey. I'm not sure which I was. <laughs> so my, my family brought me there. I was 19 years old, and one of my brothers tried to stop me from becoming a priest. You might know this story. I've shared it a few times publicly. But one of my brothers tried to stop me, and he started crying because we're a very close family. We're like Italian, so we're paisanos. We're very close to one another. And my brother began to weep, and he said, Jimmy, don't go. Jimmy, don't go. And I looked at him, and I realized right then that the evil one was trying to use one of my brothers to pull my heartstrings to keep me from fulfilling God's holy will. He will use our family members against us, will he not? That's his best weapon is your own family. That's the best weapon he has, you see? I knew what was happening, that the devil was trying to stop me from saying yes to God through my brother. My brother wasn't possessed. I'm not saying that. The devil can use anybody. That's why you got to pray so only God can use you. Amen? When you're a man of God or a woman of God, only the Holy Spirit can use you, not the devil. Amen? Amen? But when you don't pray, the devil can use anybody at any time. Isn't it true? Just like that, he can use you. So my little brother, he's crying. He said, Jim, don't go. And 
Then he said these famous words to me, my little brother. He said, Jimmy, stay in Tampa with me and become a millionaire with me. <laughs> he actually said that. Stay in Tampa and become a millionaire with me because that was the American dream when I was a boy. I call it the American nightmare <laughs> because the Bible says, set not your heart on riches even when they increase. Set your heart on God, not on riches. Amen? Amen? God will give you what you need. Set your heart on God, not on money. Amen? Amen? So he said to me, Jimmy, stay with me and become a millionaire with me. And I said to my little brother, I said, brother, I'm already a millionaire. And he looked at me like, like what is my crazy brother saying now? I said, I'm already a millionaire. And he got real quiet and he stopped crying. I thought, oh, he's calm right now. I'm going to leave right now. See ya! And I ran. I got him real quiet and I took off right then while he was calm. And I went into the monastery. The abbot greeted me. We had a ceremony in front of the tabernacle. I put on my black robe for the first time. It was beautiful. And they brought me to my cell, my little tiny room. And it was bedtime. I put on my brand new monk pajamas for the first time. I'm getting ready for bed. I even have those little monk booties as well. <laughs> and I'm, I'm saying my prayers, and I will never, ever forget, because I was, I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit, I said almost the identical prayer that we just did, Don Dolindo. I said, I'm smiling. I was, too, I was deliriously happy. I couldn't be sad for the life of me. I could not be sad. And I said, Jesus and Mary, take care of my brother. And I fell asleep with a smile on my face. Jesus and Mary, take care of my brother. Two months later, in my parents' basement, my brother was down there reading, and the Holy Spirit came over him. He began to pray in tongues and was radically converted all by himself. Guess where he is today? He's my superior. His name is Father Anthony. He's the vicar general for my community for the entire world. And he's a holy priest as well. My little brother. Mamma Mia! How great can God be? Let me ask you, is God great or is God great? How did that happen? When you give everything to God, he gives you even more back. Amen? I knew God would do something, but I didn't know he'd make it my superior. <laughs> now that is not fair. I didn't ask for that. He's, the Lord's smiling at me right now. He says, be careful what you ask for. Amen? Amen. That's a true story. And he's a, he's a holy priest, isn't he? He's a beautiful and holy priest, my brother. The vicar general for my community. I, I'm so impressed with God. Amen? That one more little tiny story from my family. I won't go to it's my own family. I gotta be very careful what I say. But let me put it this way: one of my sisters, I have five sisters. One of them, she really went off the deep end when we were all were teenagers. She became a punk rocker <laughs> with a mohawk haircut, with black leather and chains every day. When they would come to my house, my mother's house, when we were all young, with all her friends. There'd be 20 young men and women with purple hair, orange hair, red hair, mohawks, black, and chains. And they were the nicest kids in the world. They looked like monsters, but they were very, actually very nice. They were very, they were very, they said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I couldn't believe it. They were actually quite nice. And but my sister, she, she swallowed all of that and went in that lifestyle. She left the Catholic Church behind. She was never, like, malicious, like, mean or angry. She was just misled, you know. Our young people's culture, since the 60s in particular, it's, it's grabbed our young people and stolen them from the family. And it's really, beloved, it's really hellish what's happened to our young people, especially to the television and the cell phone. It's destroyed them. It grabbed my sister to be a cool punk rocker. She was away from the Lord and the church for many, many years. And she was like, like pro-Hillary Clinton, pro-abortion and all of that stuff. All the rest of us are pro-life, you know what I mean? 
You, you can't be, for anybody who's pro-abortion, you cannot be a faithful Catholic and be like pro-Biden or pro-Hillary Clinton. You can't be a faithful man of God and support somebody who kills unborn children. It's impossible. So explain it to me. How can you vote for someone who will kill your children and even call themselves a faithful Catholic? How can you do that? And I get into politics right now. This is just the truth. This is what John the Baptist would say, too. He would confront the leaders of his time. Amen? Amen. So she got into all of that nonsense. But I want to tell you a secret about my beautiful sister. I always loved her. I never hated her or condemned her. In fact, in more than 25 years, I never once preached to my sister. I can tell you in all honesty, you can ask her tomorrow, in all honesty, never once did I ever preach to my sister in 25 years. That's pretty good, isn't it? I just smiled at her and I loved her. I could see that she had a good heart and I knew that God would bring her back. I can't, but God can. Amen? Amen. My job and your job, love them when you're with them and pray for them when you're away. Amen? Just love them. Hey, honey, can I get you a cup of coffee? Help them. Love them. When you're away, pray for them. Don't preach. Don't preach. Amen? Amen. Don't do that. Love them. Love them. Love them. Then you go to the church and pray for five hours straight. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Guess who's back to Catholic Mass every Sunday and the rosary every day? My little sister. I didn't do it. God did it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And pass the ammunition. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the ammunition now. I need all my teenagers to please come up, the young people, Andrew, and all the young ones, come up and help me. We have a, a special weapon for you. give one to everybody, even to young people, okay? You'll have to open it up, guys. And I think there's 10 in the pack. Okay. 12. There's 12 in a pack, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can open them up and pass them out, guys. There should be 12 in a package, okay? There's 12 rosaries in each package. Michael? You're welcome. Joseph? Joshua? Princess? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, we don't pass out some of these right now. These are some of the instructions. Let me just take one. Thank you. Go ahead and start passing these out as well. Do we have enough for everybody, you think, of the, the instructions? Okay, it should be pretty close. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Let's keep a few here just in case. John Paul? Wow, you're fast. Sure. 
Oh, no, this is fine. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll take that. Thank you, Iho. Some more? Oh, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're receiving, beloved, the chaplet of St. Michael the Archangel. It's sometimes called the Rosary of St. Michael or the Chaplet of St. Michael. We have enough for everybody to have at least one. Children can have one too if they're able to pray. Of course, teenagers and children who are able to pray can have one as well. There should be enough for everybody to have one. And you have an instruction sheet as well. Yes, they're blessed, but I'm gonna bless them again in, in your hands. And thank you in just a moment. Um, the lady in charge is this beautiful lady here. She can tell you if any more. You need an extra chaplet? Yeah. You're welcome. If you did not receive a chaplet, would you raise your holy hand if you did not receive the holy bead? And the instructions, I think we have almost, we should have enough instruction for everybody as well. I, I think um, you can for a while. I wouldn't do it forever, but maybe once or twice. Yeah. Okay, beloved, would you take your chaplet out of the little package? I'm going to bless them. They've been blessed already, but I want to bless them a second time outside of your package. Now, beloved, would you hold your chaplet in the air, your new St. Michael chaplet. This is yours to keep, of course. The Lord be with you. O oh, beautiful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I thank you and we thank you for the gift of the angels. May they always surround my friends beginning tonight and forever. Bless these chaplets, O oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And beloved, on your way out, you can touch a drop of holy water to your chaplet from the little bowls, or from your newly exercised holy water. You can touch a drop to anywhere on your chaplet, and that finishes the blessing. Amen? Amen. One Hail Mary, because she is the Queen of Angels. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, beloved, you notice, uh, if you need instructions, raise your hand. Michael has a few extra. Anybody need instructions for the chaplet? Okay, just one. Tomorrow night we'll have the same instructions available in Spanish. We found a Spanish copy. So if you come tomorrow night, remind us, we'll give you a copy of the same instructions in Espanol. Okay? You're welcome. Now you notice, beloved, this is not your regular rosary. This is not Mother Mary's rosary. This is St. Michael's rosary. It's from the appearance of St. Michael to a Carmelite nun. It has the approval of the Vatican. It has an imprimatur for well more than 100 years now. It's an actual apparition of St. Michael. You see the configuration is one Our Father and three Hail Marys nine times in a row. That's your configuration. Remember, Mary's rosary is five sets of ten. This is nine sets of three. Why is it nine sets? There are nine choirs of angels by definition. That's called De Fide. That's part of our Catholic faith. The seraphim, the cherubim, the thrones, the dominions, the powers, the virtues, the principalities, the archangels, and the angels. There's nine choirs of angels. They're all beautiful. The chaplet begins with the seraphim and works its way down to the archangels and the angels. It goes from the largest or the greatest angels to the smallest ones. And so the greatest angels in heaven, beyond all shadow of a doubt, are the seraphim and the cherubim. And so you must have sort of rethink your memory now, clean your memory of all those paintings you and I have seen from the Renaissance period of the little tiny cherubim wearing diapers. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth, let me tell you right now. The greatest angels are the seraphim and the cherubim. They're magnificent, magnificent. Seraph comes from a word that means fire. Seraphim means those, the angels of fire. They are the closest ones to God himself. They burn with the fire of God's own love. Amen? Amen? When they are seen, they usually appear to be like a column of fire. In one of my parishes in Central America called Divine Mercy Catholic Church, the people in my congregation would see the seraphim behind me on the altar on a regular basis. I didn't see them. I wasn't holy enough. They saw them. They saw them frequently. They would see a column of fire, usually from 4 to 12. Behind the priest, maybe two on this side, two on that side, they were about 40 feet tall, higher than the ceiling. The seraphim were magnificent and huge. And that's why when they come to Mother Mary and to the other people in the Bible, what's the first thing the angel says? Every single time. Go back to your Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Be not afraid. Now, can you imagine if a seraphim was about one foot six inches and 23 pounds with diapers, <laughs> and he came to you and he said, do not be afraid. <laughs> it wouldn't be very compelling, would it? The, re the reason he says don't be afraid because they are fearsome. One seraphim, I'm telling you right now, one seraphim has enough power in his right hand to knock the planet Earth off its orbit. One, one, one seraphim can knock the sun or the moon off its course. One, when they appear to you in your living room, you go, ho, 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 and they say, don't be afraid. 
That's why they say it. Amen? Amen. They are magnificent. And they are magnificent with the splendor of God. Amen? Amen? There's nothing splendid outside of God. Everything good comes from God, even the angels. Amen? Amen? And they are his idea, not ours. God thought of the angels first. Amen? Amen. They're absolutely beautiful. This chaplet calls upon all nine choirs over your family. I believe, beloved, we need this chaplet more than ever before in world history now, right now. Not to replace the rosary in addition to the rosary. Amen? Amen. Whenever I would do an exorcism to this day, I always have my prayer team pray for me before the Blessed Sacrament. I have 25 prayer warriors. And I have each of them pray four rosaries each while I'm doing the exorcism or the deliverance. But also I have them pray the St. Michael chaplet three times. Every single time we win the battle. Every single time. Four rosaries and three St. Michaels when we have a big battle like that. In your own family, if you pray your rosaries and the chaplet, you will be well provided for and well protected. Amen. John Paul said before he died, he said, mankind is engaged in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. John Paul said that. We are in the greatest battle of all time. Amen? Amen. And so we need the rosary and the chaplet of St. Michael. Mary frequently calls St. Michael my angel. It's so beautiful. It's my angel. And that the love they have for each other. Mother Angelica from EWTN, she said, when the angels look at Mary in heaven, they gasp. When they look at Mary, they gasp. Beloved, the angels, in a particular way, they love Our Lady. And they say to say to you right now that you are chosen. The angels are whispering in my left ear to tell you that you are chosen. You are here chosen by the mother of God himself to be here tonight. Amen? Because God wants to protect you. You will be well protected after this week. Amen? Amen? Whatever happens, you and I will be fine. Here's what the Bible says. A thousand may fall at your left. Ten thousand may fall at your right but you it will never approach. Is that amazing? That's God's promise to you. It's real. Amen? Amen. So what I'd like to do is pray this chaplet with you tonight, but I want to open the tabernacle door as we do so, and that's called simple adoration. So the church has solemn adoration, right, in the monstrance, but she also has simple adoration when the Lord is simply in the ciborium. I need to open the tabernacle door because the angels love Jesus so badly, they'll get upset at me if I don't. They want the Lord to be present to all of us. They adore him. Why do you think we call the Eucharist the bread of angels? Why? They don't have a body like you and me. They can't take the Eucharist. In fact, they're jealous of you and I. But the angels, when they just look at Jesus, they swoon with love. They don't need to eat the Eucharist. They just look at them and they're filled to overflowing with love. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to open the tabernacle door called Simple Adoration. We're going to pray the chaplet before the Lord for your protection. Amen? Amen. Any questions, beloved? I will guide you through the chaplet. It's very simple. We're going to say one Our Father and three Hail Marys nine times in a row with a petition for each choir of angels that was given by St. Michael to Sister Antonia. It was given by, these were by Michael, and the Pope approved them. At the end of your chaplet, you'll see four beads there at the end. That's not the beginning. That's the end of your chaplet. We'll do those at the end in honor of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and the guardian angel. Amen? Amen. So now you're going to be protected in a brand new way beginning tonight. 
And some of you, beloved, you've come into the church uh, with things that have been battling you. Right now, I can see uh, many of them, um, they're demons. And right now, I can tell you honestly, they're trembling. They're trembling right now. They know that they've met their doomsday tonight. When you pray St. Michael's Chaplet, they have to go. Amen? Amen? Am I making sense, beloved? They're trembling right now. I can see some of them. Some of them have been in your life for more than 20 years. Demons. They're going to have to go as we pray this chaplet. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray it together now. And I encourage you to say it every day for the rest of your life. Amen? Amen. Let me open the tabernacle door to begin our chaplet. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Just take a minute, beloved, of holy silence and recollect yourself. Asking the angels to surround you and I. All nine choirs. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. For he alone is worthy. 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 Christ the Lord. Beloved, if you would take your chaplet and hold the holy medal in your hand, we're going to begin now with a sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the opening prayer, you see, is about one-third of the way down on the front of your sheet, about one-third of the way down. The leader would say this, O God, come to my assistance, and you answer, then the leader would say, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Then, beloved, if you would jump down to number one, it's numbered one through nine for the nine choirs of angels, and move your fingers to the first Our Father be. Past the first four, that's for the end of the chaplet, go past the first four to the first one that goes with a set of three. You can go either direction on your chaplet. Either direction is fine. So it could be one Our Father and three Hail Marys. And the salutation for number one, again, with an imprimatur from the Holy Father, the first salutation is this. You could say it with me, beloved. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of seraphim, may the Lord make us worthy to burn with the fire of perfect charity. Amen. I'm going to lead us now in one Our Father and three Hail Marys in honor of the seraphim. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Now, beloved, we go to the next Our Father be, one Our Father and three Hail Marys in a row, in honor of the second choir of angels called the cherubim. We can now say the salutation together, number two. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of cherubim, may the Lord vouchsafe to grant us grace to leave the ways of wickedness Thank you. To run in the paths of Christian perfection. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Isn't that powerful? You can actually feel it, can you not? It's a strong power. It's coming, there's like angel wings over your head coming down. It always is effective, this chaplet, when you pray it from your heart. Amen. Now, the third choir of angels are, to me, very noteworthy. They're called the thrones. And that is because God sits on a throne of angels. He doesn't sit on a throne of wood or of marble. Our God sits on a throne of angels. Can you imagine the honor to be a throne in heaven? And you say, oh, most beautiful God, Sit on my back, O oh God. You sit on my back, and I will be your throne. Amen? Amen? And that's why they are the patron saints of humility. The thrones give you humility. We need to be humble. Amen? Amen. Especially priests and bishops, right? We have to be humble. The thrones give us humility. So let's pray number three together. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of thrones, May the Lord infuse into our hearts a true and sincere spirit of humility. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, queen of angels, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for Now we go to the fourth choir, and what are they called? Dominion. Some translations, by the way, say domination. That's okay, too. It comes from the Latin. Either translation is correct, dominions or dominations, that's the same choir. And do you know what grace they give to you and I? Chastity. I would say probably 
they may be the choir most needed in the world right now would be the dominion. Amen? Amen? They bring us the grace of purity, especially for teenagers, but for all of us. Amen? Amen. Please, let's say number four together. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of dominions, may the Lord give us grace to govern our senses and subdue our unruly passions. Amen. Friends, you lead this one, please, and I'm going to answer you. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, beautiful Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we go, beloved, to the fifth choir of angels. And what are they called? Now note one thing about the powers as opposed to the dominions. The dominions protect my body from sin, my body from temptation. The powers protect your soul from temptation. Like you say, you get a temptation to, to, to talk fresh to somebody. Things to do with your soul, not your body. We also are tempted in our souls, aren't we? They protect your soul and my soul from all evil temptations so we become like Jesus and Mary. Amen? Amen. So please, let's say number five together. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of powers, may the Lord vouchsafe to protect our souls from the snares and temptations of the devil. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.